Hello, welcome to Moist Nougat. I am the kid. And I'm Marnie. Dan Ali is, uh, he's out this week. Yeah, he's taking a rest. Dan Ali got the uh, biopsy done on his prostate. Oh, it's not a secret. He talked about it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, wasn't feeling great. Wasn't feeling up to driving down here and, and Don't uh, blame stuff him. like that. So it was like, yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, we'll see you next so week. So I'm keeping the seat warm, sitting in his chair i've yeah. never sat in this chair for the podcast so. really yeah is it comfy <laughs> it's not bad is it tall enough I, I i don't have it all the way up yeah but i do i did have to raise I think it. it would look strange if you had it all the way up because then you'd be like I'd be way taller like than yeah. me <laughs> it, i was gonna sit at it with all the way down but there's no, like no no don't do that no cushion to yeah, it no. so i had to raise it up a little bit just get the like the spring action going gotcha uh i don't do corrections and updates anymore but this one i had to okay uh because i got my anniversary wrong last week <gasps> oh on the podcast. shit uh i said it was the 13th my anniversary is actually on the 12th of may we got married in 2013 and i think my my brain just crossed the 13th well, we were talking about mother's day because it landed on mother's day right right yeah like one time or two well times. The, the our the actual day. wedding yeah okay. and then it probably periodically will again fall on of that course. day but uh I don't know when. I'm glad you corrected that. <laughs> then I'm not sure about this, but I, I grilled some hot dogs last week. Yeah. After the podcast. Yeah. Well, I, the next day I got up and I just, because there was some leftover ones, and I just grabbed one to snack on it and uh-huh. I bit into it. And I'm like, this fucking thing's basically raw. So oh, ours I don't were know. Fine. Okay, some, the one I ate that night was cooked, but I'm like, oh my God, I was horrified. I'm like, I didn't cook these, these hot dogs are raw and everybody just ate them and didn't say anything to me. I could have put them back on the grill. No, I think ours were fine. All right. Well, that's yeah. good. That's good to know. It was then. just that one for you in the morning. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> but yeah, I just no, had, we were good. you know, I was trying to make sure the beans didn't burn and, yeah. you know, doing all that. And we ate good. Uh, like, I, and I, that cake was really good too. Even though I had a tiny piece, it was pretty good. I'm not going to take credit for the cake because. Oh. Kyle. Kyle was basically oversaw it, and then she frosted it and all that. So um, I'm not taking credit for the cake. Okay. That, that well, was a Kyle cake. wasn't her best work because she wasn't feeling great. Oh, well, but uh, well, it tasted good to me. And then, uh, totally off topic of any of that stuff, I have a Google Pixel Five, which I've had for a couple of years now, right? Okay. But the voicemail was like calling. It was like the 90s. Remember when you had your flip phone and you called your voicemail? It was like, you have a missed call from ding, ding. And it would rattle off the whole number. And it was like, if you'd like to listen to this. Ma- and yeah, like, the whole oh, thing. Yeah. This phone for two years, I've had to do that because I've never been able to get the visual voicemail working. Huh. I don't get a lot of voicemails. Right. I don't think people even leave them anymore. They just hang out. Well, oh, the, I can't get you. Yeah. Generally, they don't. Uh, but. You know, I'd still have to, if I did get one, I'd have to go through all that shit just yeah. to listen to, like, you know, Courage Kia calling me <laughs> to see how my oil change went or whatever. And it was like, fine, if it was bad, I'd probably come back down and yeah, you'd see bitch me. at somebody or something. <laughs> but I went ahead and called, you know, about it the other day mm-hmm. and they got it fixed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I don't know why I didn't call like sooner. Yeah. It was just an odd thing not to work on a, a, a phone of today's age, you know. Yeah. Well, um, I used to hate the visual voicemail on my phone. I kind of like opted out on that app. I was like, I don't want to read my voice. Well, no. Well, this just shows like who called. I mean, the oh. other way wouldn't even tell me like, like now I can see it. Like if, if you called and left me a message or my wife did, it would say, you know, Kyle or Marnie. Uh-huh. This didn't. I had to call in and I had to listen to it just to find <laughs> just out who it was. It wouldn't even show the number. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't want to read the the thing either. Yeah. Um, but, but so you finally got it hooked up. I finally got it hooked up. I nice. probably never get another voicemail now probably again. Not. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I was talking to Kyle about uh, you know how you know when you're a customer like we've had Spectrum Internet for you know several years mm-hmm. and and uh, I'm like they never you know like tell you when you're you're eligible for like an upgrade in equipment because you know technology gets better they get yeah, better not until you call or, in well i i happened to get on there and i think it was when i was looking trying to find the number for so i could call about the phone i saw where there was like a free upgrade for a wireless router 
Oh yeah. And it's you know it's got this you know mobile boost for you you know better it, speed and all that. Yeah, and and uh, so I went ahead. It was free, and so I went ahead, and it actually got here like the next day, which was yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I go through the directions. I get it all set up and everything. It's working fine. And then all of a sudden it, it quits. Oh no. So I go, I reboot everything and do all that bullshit. It goes for like two or three minutes, then it quits again. So I'm like, well, fuck this. So then I called again. Yeah. And, you know, this is. It's a whole ordeal calling these people. Yeah, that's the thing. And I call them and, and, you know, you're getting somebody that's working from home. Mm -hmm. And you hear their kids and dogs in the background. (laughs) She was nice and all that. But she's like, you know telling me to do everything that i've already done and then she's like well try a different outlet to make sure because maybe your outlet's bad your power outlet and i'm like the power outlet's not bad it's it's in a it's in a power strip that the fucking modem's plugged into right so it's the, the modem's same. working so but anyways i i said no oh well, just give me a minute i gotta move fucking furniture now again for the third time <laughs> so i do that and i just move it out of one and put it in the next one on the power strip and you know all the same but then it, then it finally started working right oh worked for like three hours and then it fucking quit again what is the problem i don't know i went and got my old wireless router hooked that back up hadn't had a problem with it since so now i got to take the new one back to spectrum and give it back to, him to the and store say, you know you can give me another one and i'll try it but i'm i'm not taking this one back and trying it again right tried it like five times it keeps quitting and well you remember when they would actually send people out to your house to fix the shit and now you got to do it yourself yeah but, but i mean it's it's pretty simple it for is, me to do but also it's just not my thing <laughs> like i'd rather have yeah and i understand it. well that's what cracked me up though it's like you know i get that this girl you know a lot of the people that call have no idea what they're doing they don't know that you know, unplug it for a minute and right. plug it back in or resets it or whatever but what about the people that do Mm-hmm. Like, I've been setting up wireless routers and shit for years now. Yeah. I've gone through all work. this. I've done it all. Right. I said, I don't know if you can see something on your end that I can't. I said, because I can't connect to the internet because the wireless router's not working. She's like, oh, you won't be able to connect to the internet if the wireless router's not. I said, no shit. <laughs> I said, but I live in the country a little bit, and I and our cell service is even choppy. Yeah. So I literally can't connect to the internet. So I can't look at your website, log in, and see what the what problem it's is saying yeah. is going on. Uh, but apparently, you're not seeing anything different than I would see if I was logged in. So They're I said, just there to guide. I said the it's dummies. working now. I'll try it again. If not, I'm just going to hook the old one up, and you can have this back. Yeah. <laughs> so. Do you have a UPS store closer than Spectrum store? It, six one way half a dozen the other the spectrum store is actually uh, a little bit closer but uh, not much i was gonna say you could take it to the ups store and they'll ship it back yeah home. yeah but i'll take it to the spectrum store because i wouldn't mind having a new wireless router right, uh, right. The, her parents next door had the exact same wireless router that they sent me mm-hmm. and they haven't had any problems with it's it. it's probably just that one there might be like maybe it's something somebody else sent back and well it's literally like 10 inches tall and it's like a Mm-hmm. You know, like four by four kind of squarish. Mm-hmm. I have that one. Okay. It was in a box that was like two feet by a foot and a half. And it was just in there flying around. So oh, it probably yeah. got all jacked up. Yeah. That's what I told the girl. I said, I mean, it didn't help that it came in like a box that was like 40 times the size of the actual freaking. Yeah. Normally the cardboard kind of like holds it in. Yeah. It wasn't. Even, it was just loose in there. Yeah. That's you know? a defective something yeah, yeah it's not your fault so, well i don't care if it is or not they can i'll i'll, I'll help somebody <laughs> shove it up their ass if they want me to <laughs> that is so but funny i had one of those weeks where like it seemed like everything i touched went to like, shit i got logged out of serious radio and then, then okay. it wouldn't accept my password and my mother-in-law is in charge of the serious radio yeah it's kind of like a my yearly Christmas gift or birthday gift right. or whatever. Yeah. She just pays for my serious radio. I have it in my car and then I can so you gotta stream call it. her and be like, I need the password. Well, I tried to, and, and then she sent me her password and stuff and hers wouldn't log in hmm. and she's at work and I'm like, well, I'm not going to bother. Her. Right. So, so it's still what about, not working. Um, YouTube TV. It was time to sign up for that, right? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. 
I thought I saw an ad on. Well, it's something. out. You can sign up for it now, oh, but, but I'm but waiting. Not. I I gotta wait till the NFL schedule comes out so I can look at the schedule for the Broncos and the Packers and see how many primetime games they have. Yeah. And try to weigh whether it's work because this one's going to be on Prime and this one's going to be on this and this yeah. one's going to be on that. It's all over the Do place. I really want to spend? You know, yeah, it's it's full full on research mode. It's funny because I was going to go back to my parents' house to like maybe help them go through or pick up some things, and my mom was like, "Well, maybe not this weekend because um, the Panthers have first pick and Dad's oh, yeah, really the, into it." <laughs> the draft started <laughs> yeah. uh, Thursday night. So did they already picked? Yeah, the they pick, they picked the quarterback one number one overall. Oh, okay. So, Who was that? Do oh, you know? I forget the kid's name. See, I don't follow college, so it, yeah, uh, I'm not really up to speed on all these college players. I, I I usually watch the draft, but the Broncos didn't even have a pick in the first round. Oh, okay. And and then they actually didn't have a pick in the second round, but they traded up and got a pick. I think they traded oh. with the Houston Texans and got a pick. They picked up a, a wide receiver. Okay. Um. Uh, but, yeah, the draft's going on, uh, I think today's the last day. Okay. They do the final rounds today. Yeah, and my dad is, like, all into, like, the fantasy every sport. I used to be. I played fantasy football for several years, and I tried hockey one year, but uh, it's hard to get people. He runs a, I, a I group, ran my I own think. league yeah. uh, for for several years. Well, a long time ago, like, at one point, he was actually – telling people he had over a hundred teams i thought i had my trophy out here but i I don't know what i did with my trophy trophy for i won my league one year oh did you (laughs) yeah kyle won one year too so because i used to buy a trophy for the winner yeah you know just a cheap trophy but now i don't know what i did with it Uh uh-oh it's missing somebody stole it yeah i thought i put it out here (laughs) somebody stole my goddamn fantasy trophy no, I don't know what I did with it. No, my dad is totally into it. Addicted almost, I think. He'd much rather do that than go through his it's, sports stuff. It's fun, but it's it's also time consuming. But and it makes it, you watch a lot more games and stuff. Well, and also he claims it doesn't cost money, which I think is total bullshit. You can there's free leagues. Yeah, but I don't think he's doing those. No, most people want to play the the money leagues. Yeah. Even like, even my mom is even like, private oh, leagues because you can get in public leagues where you know it's like a whatever and but it, I mean they pay out pretty big sometimes too yeah but, um, mine was just free it was just for the fun of it right but people would lose interest and in, and in what they you know it's like if you don't cite your roster for this week it fucks up all the games for everybody else the person you're playing and yeah. standings and so if you're not gonna play. So I, being the league manager, I'd wait till the last minute, and I'm trying to get my lineup set and everything right. else, and somebody's not, you know. So I have to go in because I mean, with the bye weeks, uh, where like a team might have a week off during the season, mm-hmm. and if you got like four other players playing that week, they're not going to get any points because they not that team's not playing that week. So I yeah. have to go in and like at least set their roster a little bit. So it's sort like of a made lot of work. For, yeah, that's why I kind of got over it after a while. Yeah. I was like, you know. Maybe join a league, and you know, I played a couple, two or three leagues for a few years. But yeah. I think my dad way over does it, like, or at least a few years back, he was just a lot. I yeah. mean, it took time away from family. Yeah. <laughs> it, it can, it yeah. can. But I mean, but, you know, Kyle was in the league too, so yeah. Well, y'all you know. did it together. Yeah, my mom so. has no desire. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, I guess we should get into our topic. This is kind of a weird topic, but. And we're going to have two different perspectives because I don't. Yeah, we are. But, I mean, it, it's, we could both just be clueless on all of it because I was running them by the boys and they were like, people still do that. And I'm like, I don't see them doing that. I don't, so. This is the thing. This is from my perspective. It's things we do. We did as kids mm-hmm. that they can't do. Kids can't do now or, won't or, do. Do, or don't or won't do now. Yeah. 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 Uh, and like I said, first off, I don't have any kids. So this is from like a spectator's perspective on well, what I observe. When you were a kid, you know what you did. I, I mean, you couldn't get me inside when I was a kid. I was outside. Well, and that was like one of my major ones. We actually played outside. Yeah. I know kids do, but it's just weird now. Like they aren't doing the same things we were doing. I hardly ever, like when I grew up, like 
kids were always outside. There'd yeah. be kids all the way up and down the streets, you know, doing outside, playing, doing whatever, mm-hmm. you know. And like I said, I mean, my mom had to like drag me in the house, you know. It's basically when the street lights came on and you're supposed to go home. Yeah, or Which, at least close by. <laughs> and I get when you're a certain age, like it's different, a little different when you're a teenager because you're, you know, old enough and smart enough to, not, you know, not get in a van when somebody offers you candy or whatever. Right. But even when I was little, I could still go out and play, yeah. you know, but I just had to stay in a certain radius of right. the house, you know. Yeah. Well, and I remember even, you know, we would play outside hard when we were young, but then even being a teenager, like at least I probably had like four good friends in the neighborhood when I was in junior high. Um, we would at least take a walk every day. Yeah. Just walk around the neighborhood and talk like we would just get out of the house. And right. it's a lot of kids these days that don't even do that. They don't even go out of the house. I mean, I get it. I didn't I didn't grow up with like video games and and smartphones and well, video games we did. Well, but not so much when I was little. Yeah. No. I mean, Pong was like, yeah, that was it. Did you have an Atari? Uh, the one with the stick that had the little... I don't think I had an Atari until Atari was, like, old shit. Okay. Like, I was always, like, way behind the curve because I couldn't afford, like, the latest and greatest of yeah. everything. I just remember it pinching my finger all the time. <laughs> but, it was kind of like a little trigger and a little turning thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, kids playing outside. It's funny. I saw a TikTok the other day. And it was a lady looking outside of her window at the neighbor's house. And she was just kind of commenting on the kids. And she was like, I think these parents just told their kids to go outside and play. And these motherfuckers don't even know what to do. Right. (laughs) Yeah, they don't. They're literally walking in circles in the front yard. And then one kid like walked over and just started flicking a leaf on the bush. I think I saw the same video. (laughs) Yeah. It was hilarious. I was like, damn, they don't know what to do outside. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't get me inside. If I wasn't playing baseball or, or, you know, whatever, you know, we were at night, we'd be playing like hide and seek or yeah. kick the can kind of shit. Yep. You know, we always played, um, light tag or something like that. Yeah. You know, Just, I never heard of this game until we, I got with my ex, but he said that they used to go outside and play hide and go get it. Hide and go get it. <laughs> Go get what? Exactly. It's <laughs> <laughs> like never heard of that one, but okay. <laughs> we used to go to like the big cemeteries and just go in there to like scare the shit out yeah. of ourselves yeah. and things like that. Yeah. We didn't have cemeteries near us, but when, you know, there have been times where we would go to like church groups and there was a family that lived like right near one. And so we would go around and like yeah. scare each other out there. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Outside playing. Um, so I was just going to say um, recording on cassette tapes. Like we yeah. did that as a kid. Yeah. We would of course, rec- record ourselves. Cassettes are coming back. I know. Y'all told me that. But I, I don't like, know. I haven't seen I, it. I don't know if they're coming back in a capacity of that, like where everybody's going to go out and get the shoebox recorder and, yeah. you know, maybe with a little microphone. Yeah. Because Try technology, I mean, they're going to get really bored really quick with that because because technology is so much better now right you're not going to get anything that sounds all that great you can record on your phone better than that I, I, the whole cassette thing is going to be a flash in the pan as far as i'm concerned because i didn't even know that i mean i knew you know records were coming back but i didn't yeah I records are big that. and all that and i and i understand why it's a nostalgia th- thing i guess right. and a process you know you get your record out and you you clean it and you know you have your turntable and because Dan Lee and I have talked about it several times on the podcast because, you know, it's it's cool now because you can have your big record collection in your living room, in, mm-hmm. in your apartment or your house or whatever. But when you want to go to your friend's party, you can just take your phone or your MP3 or a, a, or a flash drive or whatever else. Yeah. And uh, you don't have to carry all those fucking records. A big crate. Yeah, like a milk <laughs> crate. We, they carry like 50 or 60 records in a right. milk crate, and it weighed like 75 pounds. Exactly. And that's how you took your music to a party. Mm-hmm. Then you had to worry about somebody who was going to scratch your record or, you know. Yeah. And But the cassettes, you know, as soon as they start leaving them in their car or whatever... Yeah, the, when it's 100 degrees melting. out and they start melting and they're and and yeah they're 
That's they'll be fine. done with it. I don't think the the record thing, like I said, is it can be a more of a process and the album covers and what, the cassette thing. I don't think is it's going to come back for a little while. And then it's going to go away again really quick. I mean, I just remember buying singles of cassettes. Cause singles? Yeah. Like we would just go and it'd be one hot song and you could buy it and it'd be real cheap. You don't have to buy the whole yeah. entire, you know, album. One of my old bands put out a cassette single. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Two songs, one on each side. Really? <laughs> do you still have some? That would be great. I actually do ha- still I have, think I have some actual physical cassettes that are still shrink wrapped now i don't know if they'll play or not or what they'll sound like if they play but i but i digitize them so i have digital copies of them on my computer yeah so if i were you know once in a while listen to them or you know but just having the cassette tape was kind of yeah no i yeah i i had a handful of them that that we didn't sell or whatever or we all kept you know yeah just a few just to have that's cool and uh all right, what you, what else you got? Riding bikes. And this kind of goes with the outdoor thing, but mm-hmm. like I rode my bike everywhere all the time except in the winter time when it was snowing. Yeah. Like all the time. I don't see kids on bikes hardly ever anymore. Yeah, I see more adults on bikes. Right, than wearing kids. the stupid shorts and the, you know, pointy helmet and everybody's, you know, like a professional. Yeah. And what sucks about down here is there's no shoulders on the road, so yeah. they're really, man, you're you're flirting with disaster. Yeah, you know, trying to get killed. But you know, it's good exercise. I understand why people like, but I would take my bike to like a greenway or something like that and ride it. Yeah. Um, I think I did have a scooter for a little while, but I, like I said before, I was I've always been kind of iffy about bikes. They kind of yeah yeah. I don't know what it is. It, they just make me nervous. But I did have not like an electric scooter, but like one where you actually pushed right, it. Right, right. So I had one of those for a little Flintstone while. power. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we did. We just did a lot of walking everywhere. Yeah, I mean, if we didn't walk somewhere, we were riding our bikes somewhere. I yeah. mean, it was just. Like, we were just always out and about. Didn't yeah. even watch TV that much, you know, as kids. I mean, there were shows, but you had to be inside. But it was nighttime. At, at, at that... 8 o'clock. Yeah. The show came on. There was no yeah. DVR. There was no, like, VC. I mean, there were VCRs. VCRs came out. We didn't. I mean, when they first came out, they were super, super expensive. Yeah. Now, like, later on, when I was a little bit older, we had VCRs. But right. then you had to pray and hope that you set the timer right, that it was going to kick on and record the show. That's that the you whole deal. For, yeah. You know. That's funny. I think my dad had, we had two at one point. One was just for his sports. Because, you know, you could only watch one game back then at a the time. Right, <laughs> so right. he would record other and he had other TVs. There were like two TVs, two VCRs, and then in the other room we had a TV and a VCR. Yeah. If they find one of the... But one was beta, though. One was beta yeah, yeah. before VHS even came out. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, if they, I know that they're cleaning out their barn. If they come across a VCR or whatever and they want to get rid of it, let me know. Okay. Because I'm actually <laughs> in the market for a VCR. Cause really? I have some, they might have one. I have some old VSH t- tapes that I band tapes and stuff like yeah. that and i don't know if, if they're even watchable anymore i had an old vcr yeah the thing one, once i started to try to use it the thing just won't work and so well, I, if we don't know, have one it. which i would not be surprised if we do um pawn shops you could probably get one for ten dollars you'd be surprised really you they're more expensive them? well new ones no like, like pawn new, shop new. Well, yeah, you can get them on, like, Facebook Marketplace, but you don't know if they're going to work or not. But, but, but like, $30, $40, $50 for them. Wow. And you can find people that actually have ones that are still brand new in boxes. Like, somebody was smart and said, this is these are going to go away someday, and there's no company. There was only one company still making them, and I forget what year they stopped, but it was, like, 10 years ago. Sony? No, it was some weird company that uh, I'd never really heard of before. They were the last one to to make a, an actual them. VCR. And then, uh, but these people that have them, like, still in boxes, still new, they're wanting, like, four, five, six hundred dollars for them. That's crazy. And That's I'm like, crazy. Uh, I might watch these tapes once or twice the rest right. of my life. I'm not paying that kind I of I feel money. like, though, if you went to an actual pawn shop, you could bring a tape and be like, let me make sure it works before yeah. I buy it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I almost did go to a pawn shop yesterday, but just my allergies are killing me, and I was just, I was trying to kill like fifteen minutes because I we got pizza, I picked up a pizza, and oh yeah, I had to go to the grocery store and then pick up a pizza, and I was in the grocery store way less than I thought. Yeah, so like I had like forty minutes to kill, and I was like. There was too many people in there and shit. I just like, I don't want to go in this fucking place. There's like, you know, five cars in the park a lot. And so I just sat in my car for like 20 minutes. Oh, wow. I would have gone in the pawn shop just to look around. <laughs> I thought about it, but. um, Okay. So this isn't like fun, but cursive. That's a good one. Kids are not writing in cursive. I don't think Cameron or Caleb were taught cursive in school. And Cameron's 28. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? I remember learning like who's it gonna in be able kindergarten. To read? What happens if like everything shuts down and there's documents that are written? Then you written just print. You just print. Your name. What if you had to read documents that were written in cursive? Yeah, that nobody I mean, would be able to read. I'll them. be honest, I've seen some people's, you know, cursive handwriting and I'm like, I can't read this. Yeah. I it's, it's crazy to me, and, and I I understand sort of why they don't Well, everything's teach electronic now. Well, everything's electronic. Everybody types on a keyboard or their phones or tablets or whatever. But I, I still feel like it's just an essential... That's what we think. <laughs> ...part of, of learning. But what gets me even more than that, because printing, like if you can print, you can still read and write. Right. Um, but telling time on a, like a analog clock, like I have up there or counting change. That is one that even Caleb said to me, cause I was telling him me and his dad, both we were like, you need a place to work at that you can just walk to. So we were telling him, go get a job at Adam and Eve. That'd be a great place to work for a yeah. young man. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and he was like, he looked up the application and they were talking about, um, running the cash register and being able to count money. And he was like, yeah, I, I'm not great at that. Some people do still use cash. But I also told him, I was like, you've got a phone and you, the, the machine that you're doing the sales on usually tells you what you need to give them, you know, as far as, but still like just the fact that he said, yeah, I'm not good at that counting change or, yeah you know and i've worked so much retail in my life that Same. you know like I, I get irritated to this day when well i don't use cash hardly ever anymore, hardly ever unless yeah. it's like a place like you're in an event and it's cash only or right which most of those aren't even that anymore either right um but when people just well when we were out doing the, on the road and uh -huh. people come up you know a lot of people were still using cash then and, you know, they pull it out of their pocket and it's all wadded up and shit. And I'm like, fucking, you got to sit there and, you know, and then yeah. you give me their change. And, like, if it was a bad, bad fucking day or the guy was being an asshole or whatever, I hear wad it up and go, here you go. <laughs> I'll give it back but to nice you people, like I'd be to... like, you know, you, you know, you gave me a 50 and the shirt was 25. Yeah. You know. Here you so go. You, Here's your 25. Right. <laughs> you 25, count it out to... 5 is 30. 20 is right. 50 and you know and you do that with change in, in back in the day nobody does that anymore. down to the penny mm -hmm. you know yeah because you're trying to make them understand that you're giving them their correct money back right that was the whole purpose of that but well now it's like and even banks now if, like if you do like the the you cash a check or something and they, and they count the money back to you they do count it back to you usually yeah any bank worth its salt the tellers are going to count the <laughs> money back to you but then they put it in an envelope and i go out and i take it out and put all the bills the right way oh yeah see when i worked at a credit union, like i had to i was anal about that like all my money even in my drawer had to be like the same way same here yeah. same here but yeah kids are not counting no nope. change or cursive or telling time yeah which the telling time one baffles me it's like why don't you get it? Yeah, I don't. It, like, but it's, it's just too easy now because everything's well, on your phone. I know, but it's such, especially telling time is such basic, mm -hmm. basic math. Yeah, it's kids are clueless. Like it's just 
<laughs> you know, that's why. Like, and I I hear some younger people like on TikTok. They're like, why do old people always like? You know, what time is it? So it's half past three. I will say this: when they get pissed, it's like half past. Half is thirty fucking minutes because yeah. a whole is sixty minutes. Well, my mom used to say times like that and it used to frustrate me as a kid because i'd be like just tell me the exact time i don't need this quarter past or half past like it is it's quarter till I three know, but it's just say the three. real time or the people that use military well, time, time? Two, four, well that yeah that's you know, like why are you trying to make this hard for me you know, meet you at 2400 hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> like okay i'll be late <laughs> but if you were in the military and that's how you know it probably gets yes. in your head and well and they also think everybody should know I mean, come on. Yeah. Not everybody was there. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, the, the But my mom used to do the quarter pass and the half but pass. But it's night. it's only quarter like quarter till I quarter know. after. But we're not talking about half money. Half pass. No, but like if if you went <laughs> if, if you got into like, you know, it's it's uh, you know, one fifth till you know. <laughs> No. <laughs> if you started throwing that shit out, then yeah. I get the But I mean, you're talking about like four things. You're, you're on the hour, you're quarter past the hour, you're half past the hour, you're a quarter till the next hour. Right. No, I get it. Because you don't go, it's three quarters after two. You right. say it's a quarter to three. Right. <laughs> so. Right. I get it now, but back in the day when I was younger, I'd be like, Mom. It's half past a monkey's ass and quarter till his balls. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least compare. I'm comparing this to like what I did or how I was as a kid or even toys we had that are like they wouldn't even play with these days i think that uh there's far less respect f for your elders with there yeah. is i just see it for all sure. the time i i like i've seen videos where like young men are fighting like punching old men and stuff and it's oh, like yeah. i would never well, that's a whole nother subject that's like yeah you know, no matter what he said, I wouldn't physically attack him. Right. I'd walk away. Yeah. Um, but but just you know, like when I grew up, it was an era where if if I mouthed off to the neighbor Oh yeah, my mouth they was could, getting washed they out. They could with whoop soap. my ass and my mom might be pissed at first until she found out what I did and yeah. then she was like, Oh, did you whoop it enough? Yeah. You know, I'll never forget being at somebody's house and I've, I don't remember the family. Like I kind of have images, but I think I called them a butthole. The kid, it was a boy and I called him a butthole for a reason, but my dad literally took me into their bathroom and washed my mouth out with soap, with their soap. Mind you, who knows where that was, <laughs> you know, like could have been in a butthole exactly <laughs> <laughs> but i'll never forget that like it was i don't like now i look back and i'm like my dad was trying to prove a point to his older friends i used to get my mouth washed out with soap when i was six yeah five six yeah, young on a daily basis by really? my grandmother yeah <laughs> um because i just took to cussing and uh i learned it from carrie the bully yeah because he was like six years older than me. So I was always out chasing him and his friends around mm -hmm. who were, you know, at the age where, you know, boys start cussing all the time and stuff. It's just part of their language. Right. Not so much for, you know, a six, seven year old. You know, right. Especially around my grandmother. <laughs> and I never forget the one time, like, she couldn't find a bar of soap. So she grabbed the, like, the dishwashing liquid. I don't think she actually squirted it in my mouth, but... She probably I remember, put it on a rag. I remember like, Carrie the Bully saying, oh, you can't use that. That'll kill him. And of course, I think it's actually going to kill me. <laughs> so I'm terrified. <laughs> well, it's n really not any different than the uh, bar soap. Probably not going to taste any it, different. Yeah, no, but, it tastes the but same. But yeah, I just, I feel like, you know, in, 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 when I say this stuff, I don't mean all kids. And, and when I say kids, I, I'm talking, you know, to me, my age, 25 and less, you know, I know you think you're all grown up when you're 25. I did. I mean, I was married before I was 25. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that was pretty close to when I got married the first time. So. Yeah. I mean, I had a child 
before yeah. 18. But it doesn't, I mean, it, you know, now studies say that your, you know, your brain isn't developed until you're almost in your 30s yeah, and not. stuff. And, yeah. And I, I think that's, it's a little bit of an excuse. Yeah. I think part of growing up is just getting older and learning and living and learning is exactly. what makes you an adult. And yeah. It happens quicker for some people than it does for other people. You, well, because you don't actually listen to your parents until after you're grown and you're like, oh, they were telling me good things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, Except that, you know, like once you get to a certain age, you don't get zits anymore. That's bullshit. <laughs> I get zits at 54. <laughs> Every once in a while I'll get one that hurts on my chin, you know. It, it, that, so that was a big fucking lie. <laughs> Well, I was like more on this subject. I was thinking more about like things that entertained us as kids oh, yeah. and would never entertain kids these days. No. So like um, puffy paint. Puffy paint. You don't know what puffy paint is? I don't is? know what puffy paint is. It might is. be a girl thing. So back in the day when we were younger, we would get this like squeezable color paint and we would make our own t-shirts. You just squirt it out. Okay, and then you I know let what you're talking dry. about. I didn't know it was called puffy paint. Well, I Caleb never did. calls it puff paint. I'm like, it's puffy paint. <laughs> I never did that. Right. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but kids would be so bored with that these days. They'd be like, Psh. maybe I own tie dyes a couple times. Well, yeah. Well, that's come back. That's a like that was a thing, and oh, now yeah. it's come back. Yeah, yeah. Tie dyes were awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, like, I would play with Matchbox cars. Okay. Like I could yep. spend a day. Yeah. Like just playing my brothers. Matchbox cars. Like yeah. out in the yard, I'd be making like roads and mm -hmm. you know a couple friends. We'd you know we'd had, just the whole day. Yeah. The whole day just, just playing with tracks. Matchbox cars. Yeah. You know, build a racetrack over here, and you got a stone quarry over here, and I'm pretty sure um, my brother got like a car wash thing one time. For Christmas, yeah, yeah. and it was like all the cars, and then you could run it through the car, car wash. wash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But that was like pre-made; it wasn't us in the yard. But like it. the toys kind of went in a different direction eventually, where the toy had to do something. Yeah, instead of you doing something with the toy, right, yeah, right, yeah. And uh, well, that goes to another one: um, looms. Blooms. Which is also a girl thing. I don't know if you remember people were making like little pot holders. Oh, like on, doily type things? Yeah, but it was like a whole red little box and it was plastic and you learned how to weave the stretchy fabric through things. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I had a whole doily phase. <laughs> I didn't make them, but I had them in my house. Like a single uh, guy. They were just pretty. <laughs> well, because my grandmother always had yep. them and stuff. And I, like, I don't know if I was where I was at and it was like doilies. And I was like, bought a bunch. And then, you know, you know, I got this little vase. I'm going to put a doily yeah, underneath well, it. Yeah, you, know? you decorated your house. That's nice. <laughs> a lot of <sighs> men don't give a fuck about well, that. Well, I was shit. trying to turn my kitchen into like a 50s diner. I had. Oh, my God. You sound like table, what I'm doing to my house now. And, and, uh, <laughs> my house is so 70s. Like, I bought new furniture to look like the 70s. Like, my parents got me, like, the uh, napkin dispenser, like the chrome napkin. Yeah. Nap and then my mom had, like, menus that she bought. And then, of course, she wrote in inside, made her own, like, you know, the, the Bronco burger. And, <laughs> oh, you know, she so made fun. up a little menu. And, yeah, I it was cool. That. It was definitely cool. Did you make the Bronco burger? No, I think the only thing I made was homemade macaroni and cheese and chicken wings. Well, if you can make mac and cheese homemade, and frozen pizza. that's a good that's a good quality. You, I haven't some... made it in a long time because I showed uh Kyle my recipe and she kind of took over and make it makes okay. it and uh when we eat it. Don't eat it as much because I love some good mac and cheese. I do too, but it's I've, a lot of work. I've it's become a, a little bit lactose intolerant in my oh, older age. So okay. like and because it's got so much cheese and it's got milk, milk and, and eggs. So and I tend to eat too much of it. Yeah. And then Yeah, now I get it. Suffer the consequences. <laughs> Sometimes it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, it's definitely worth it. It definitely uh, tastes is worth it for one night. All right. What else you got? I got uh, a couple others, but one of my weird ones is, well, it's not weird. 
we were actually talking about it a little while ago. Learning to drive. There's like a lot of kids aren't learning to drive anymore, and I I could not wait. Same. To get my life. When I turned 16, the first thing I did is went and got my, I'd already gone through driver's ed in school, and I'd already gone taking my, in, in New York anyways, there was a thing called a three-hour course. Okay. And if you took the three-hour course, you had to go to like DMV and take the three-hour course. Yeah. And uh, you got a blue card. And what the blue card meant is you could drive later at night. Than What's your permit? At 16, I could. Oh, kind of like a, a work thing. Like if you have well, a no, job. I just meant that I, like I could drive at night because I think uh, yeah, your permit when you're doesn't 16, allow. Yeah, you have to stop at a certain time. Yeah, and I could drive later because I had this blue card, but I could not wait. I I got my permit, and you know, I I knew how to drive already, so it was like uh, now it's just like I passed the permit test. Now it's just like set up the 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 road test. So yeah. I can get my license. You know? Well, I will say this. I actually quit school, quit high school and dropped out. The only reason I went to back. To get your license? No, no, I dropped out because I was just having a bad year. Well, and that, then that I went. That was a joke. No. I went, <laughs> I know you didn't quit school to get your no, license. No, but I went back to school just to get to my get permit. Your, well, that's good. That's Cause good. Because the class was free. You went back to school to get your permit. Back to school to do driver's ed. Well, that's better than what I was kidding about. <laughs> like, you quit. To, yeah, to but I only ed. went back just for driver's ed. But, yeah, I mean, well, it makes sense. Yeah. I only went to school because I had to. I mean, yeah. there's people who are telling me. You know, <laughs> oh. We had, what, truant, truancy officers back oh, in the yeah. day? Well, like, I don't think we actually had them in my town. We but, did. Yeah. I remember like getting come wrangle you up. up at the park while you're smoking pot and dragging your ass back to school. It's Me like I ain't gonna learn anything anyways. I'm stoned. <laughs> so I went to South Mech in Charlotte, which is on like Park Road, and we skipped school one day and we went and hid in the next door neighborhood. Um, and they had like these little sections where ev- like all the people kept their trash cans in one little area. Mm-hmm. So we went and hid in those and. The truancy cops found us and came and got us. And so said, what school, school do you go to? And we told them we went to the junior high school, which was a total lie. And they took us back there. <laughs> <laughs> they just drop you off? No, they went into the office. And while we were waiting for them to come back out, we just took off. Bolted. Again. <laughs> we were so bad. Yeah. Anyways. But yeah, driving. I, I just... I, I don't know. For me, it was like... I was so excited. Well, it, it was getting independent. I mean, of course, you had to get a car and stuff like that, which is a whole nother thing because in my experience, these kids now... My, my first car was a 1977 Monte Carlo. Right. Something like it nothing literally, crazy. I know like $100 then is probably like... Three hundred dollars an hour or something. It was hundred dollars. Yeah, I bought some cheap tires because it needed tires to pass inspection, and I drove that car for like two years. Yeah, all my cars until I started making enough money were all hand me downs, just like my bike. So I got all my sister's cars. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but now it's like they think they need a you know oh, brand yeah. new you know Honda Mercedes or something. It's like it's your first fucking car. If if you're my kid, I just want to make sure that it's a safe car. Yeah. Well, like, I want it to be somewhat, you know, didn't have to worry about that so much back in my day because they were just big, giant cars. Yeah. So they were know? safe because there was so much metal around. You. Yeah. Especially <laughs> old 77 Monte Carlo. Yeah. But, my, uh, my dad was a Volvo dealer for a little while like salesman and so it was all about volvos because yeah. they're the safest cars in yeah the world. that's how my wife yeah they're they're volvo i mean i don't they love mind volvos. them i drive a lot of them but some of them were big tanks yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah i don't know what else i can say about driving i wanted to drive i don't understand the not wanting to drive or not it was just such Well, I a, think there's more elements to it these days. Um, just not only being scared to drive, but other drivers around you. And then you've got the whole cop thing. And, but also money. Like, kids, it, I guess it takes 
less money to entertain them as far as being in the house. Well, that's the thing. If you don't go outside of the house, you don't need a car. Yeah, we're so not therefore spending money on a car. You don't need a driver's <laughs> license, I guess. And it depends on where you live, too. Yeah. Public transportation. So, like, if you grow if up in New, New York, York City, you're you don't not, need a car. Yeah, not, it, like, a car is just a hassle and a huge expense. Right. Exactly. You know? You don't um, need it. But I lived in rural country. I mean, you had to you had to have a car to get, get around. Get somewhere, you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't want to be caught riding a bike when I was a senior in high school. I need my fucking car. <laughs> it's like no bike or walk. I got or... to park in the senior parking lot, too. Nice. As long yeah. as there were spaces. Right. You know? I know at um, the boys' high school, they had to be reserved for the year. You had to pay for them. Oh, Jesus. That's ridiculous. <laughs> first come, first fucking serve. Get right? yeah, Early bird gets the worm, motherfuckers. Right. Um, the last thing I was going to say about kids that, um, they're clueless about these days is beepers. Beepers? Beepers. Like, we had beepers, how to contact people and be like, hey, call me. And kids are like, what is a beeper? They're clueless. You're talking about, uh. And a pager. Pager, yeah, okay. Pager, beeper, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think doctors still use them. Do they? I don't think so. I think they, what about, yeah, no, they I got actual the phones. In years. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> you should do that. I have no health insurance. <laughs> well, you know. You still when it's go my see time, a it's my time. That's you can still go see a doctor and just not pay the bill. Well, if I go see a doctor now, I'm not going to get into this whole conversation. They're not going to make you pay. They're going to want me to go to see another doctor that's even more because they're a specialist. And then I'm going to have to go do this. And, and like, I'm going to be like 20 grand in debt. We're all going to die with debt. So fuck well, it. At least you'll know what you need to be doing. I'm not going to die with <laughs> debt unless it's a mirrorless camera debt. <laughs> okay. I almost pulled the trigger the other day. Did Spent you? hours looking at him. That was the the first day that I got stressed out. That's what stressed me out. That's you what were just started my. Hard I was at looking cameras. so hard, watching videos and doing research on them, and trying to figure out like which if I was going to buy one today, which one would it be? And then, uh, and then you know all the other shit happened. Yeah. And like by the end of the day, I was just like literally screaming, like with like if the like just. Every cuss word I could say at the top of my lungs. <laughs> Poor Kyle. You need to chill the fuck out, man. I know, I know. <laughs> Maybe you need to sleep with that tree. Just hold it next to your heart. <laughs> just hold it. <laughs> Give it a hug. Uh, but uh, anyways, off my health. Uh, one of the things I don't see kids do a lot of that I used to do a lot. Yeah. It's like yard work, like mowing the lawn and. Uh, you know, I, I worked a lot when I was a kid. If it wasn't mowing lawns, it was painting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was, when I was 16 or whatever, I actually, I had my work permit. I had to go get like a work permit when yeah, I was like I 12 too. so I could deliver papers. Mm -hmm. uh, I had paper routes, uh, and, and worked at Burger King and like Kmart and the whole nine yards yeah. when I was like in high school well my family had retail stores so i worked those but then when i got 14 i my first job outside of the family was mcdonald's um so yeah and then cameron cameron was working from 14 on with our neighbor yard work yeah you know he's got to you go just don't work. see a lot of it now like you you think yeah, this one like i see <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going there but but like the 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 lady that lives across the street is an older lady. Mm -hmm. Now her usually I think it's her sons that come and mow the lawn, but they're adult sons. Right. They're not like you know in the and neighbor I, kid coming. Hey, can I help you out and mow your lawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or you know like whatever the grandkid. I like will say push this. mowing, not like I don't yeah. fucking you know five thousand dollar riding lawnmower right. either. You know. Well, I will say this: when we were at our old house in Steel Creek. Um, my husband did make him mow the lawn and he had, we had a push one, but it was also electric. So it like charged the battery, put it in, right. and, but it was still pushing and working. And so he would just use the, um, what do you call it? The hedger 
or whatever and do the edges while Caleb would mow the whole lawn. Right. But since we've been in the new house, I guess I'm just a pushover and I don't make him do shit. Well, do you have a lawnmower? I do. It's the same electric one. And yeah, he was like, I'm looking for a house. If I get a house, can I just have it since y'all aren't using it? Because I kind of, I'm like, Cameron, the older kid, he that's his job. Right. And you're storing a whole lot of shit in my house. So just come mow my lawn. Like, I feel like I have earned that right. <laughs> in a way. But um, You yeah, birthed he, them. I did birth them. And like that he, I guess he would do it, but guarantees it, he like doesn't lawnmower. like take my, I don't know. My ex is always like, tell him to do it. Don't ask him to do it. I'm like, I do tell him to do shit, but he don't. There's certain things he likes to do and doesn't like to do. He'll fucking vacuum and do the dishes and mop before he wants to go outside and do the lawn. He thinks well, the that heat goes back will kill to what, him. The first thing we said, go outside. Yeah. <laughs> well, he thinks heat is going to kill him. And even cold. He's like, look, Mom, my fingers turn white. <laughs> he makes me feel so bad for putting them outside. I pumped gas at a gas station. It was 49 below zero. Yeah. Kids are different these days. I mean, I, you know, worked at McDonald's. It was four thirteen an hour, I believe. Yeah. When I minimum wage when I started working was three thirty five. Yeah. Three thirty five. Yeah. These kids are, you know, making bank compared, to, but everything is more expensive. Well, you know? yeah, and <laughs> we, the things we are definitely bitch, different, bitch, bitch. like because. But one of the things that, like, on their side kind of thing mm-hmm. is uh, kids th- kids that get bullied. Mm-hmm. Like, when I was growing up, like, I didn't bully kids, and I didn't get really bullied a whole lot. I mean, I think everybody got bullied a little bit at some point mm-hmm. in their, their school life. Yeah. Um, but now, it, but, but then it was just like, you know, it was like walking to school or at school during a class or at recess or walking home from school. But now it's all the time with social media. Yeah. Like, it's you know, different. these kids are getting attacked on their, you know, like they shouldn't not be able to have social media because some prick, like if I found out my kid was bullying a kid, mm-hmm. that kid better run. Yeah. I'd because he's going to get his, his ass. ass fucking whooped. Yeah. If you're an asshole, I'm going to check you. Yeah. yeah. My kid is not bullying. I don't have kids. Well, and that's like, I've even asked, you know, Cameron and Caleb, like, were there bullies in school? And because, you know, they have all these shows these days that you can watch and they're talking about like bullies affect these kids and all this stuff. And both of my boys have been like, yeah, no, we just stay to our group of people and we don't get bothered. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how to judge it because... I do know there are kids that get bullied, and but there are, and and but think like about Caleb doesn't have social media except for his art. He's never been that person really to it? do. Well, yeah, I and mean, that's cool actually. But think about the, like you have memories from even grade school, mm-hmm. like an embarrassing moment, or oh, yeah. so, like and it sticks with you. It just doesn't go away. That's, but I think back, and I think it's more about how I was feeling about myself. Right. Than what other people were doing mean things to me. They were they were probably just trying to like be funny or whatever. Yeah. But didn't realize how much it affected me. But I was always able to like brush things off a little bit, I think. Well no, I'm not but what I'm I'm not saying like I'm just saying anything that happened that you you just remember. Like it if fifty four yeah. I can remember like, you know, the high school play when I was in the wrong spot at the wrong time, the kid you know, had the guitar and turn her and I was behind him and it hit me and I got a black eye. You know, oh, I, yeah. I still remember that. That would you know? be a huge moment. Yeah. Uh, but for a kid that's like truly bullied and terrorized by a group of people or even a single kid mm-hmm. it, like that, like getting hit with a guitar in the eye and getting a black eye has stuck with me all these years. And, that, and right. I'm talking like like fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, so imagine how that sticks with them. Yeah. 
you know, so that's why I would I would, I would just not tolerate it for my, if yeah, I had no. a kid that was bullying, no. that kid would be in a world of shit. Yeah. Um, only thing I got left mm-hmm. <laughs> is uh, going out on your own, like getting your own place, uh, you know. I had my own uh, place when I was a senior in high school. Did you really? I had a wow. roommate. I had a roommate. I wanted to. Like, I was um, trying to run away all the time. <laughs> and it was it was a blast until we got kicked out. Yeah. Because um, you didn't pay your rent? I paid him. Um, he was a year older than I. Okay. So he was actually allowed like to be on the lease or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But he needed a little extra income to be able to rent the place. Mm-hmm. So I moved in with him. And I was paying my share of the rent. He didn't pay the rent. He wasn't paying the rent to the landlord, and we got okay. booted out. Yeah. Damn. Um, but, but yeah, that is a huge thing. Like we used to move out really, really early compared to like what people are these days. Oh yeah, but in their defense, like like I was saying, minimum wage is three thirty five. There would be no way in hell that I was going to make, even if I was working full time at. 350 or four dollars an hour and i still probably wasn't gonna be able to have my own place i yeah. was gonna have to have roommates or whatever yeah um but I it's, think we it's, were braver back then well we were and well it, well number one when you went and rented a place the the landlord's either gonna rent it to you or he wasn't gonna rent it to you now you got to get a fucking background check and credit checks and but it's all on your dime right so just to just to see if you can rent the place cost you a couple hundred dollars, yeah, which is the most asinine thing, right? An I've, application fee, <laughs> yeah, to two companies that are billion dollar fucking companies. Yeah. They're 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 gouging people. Which this whole topic is a whole other podcast. Yeah, we um, went all the way left, but 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 it's, but okay. it's it, I'm just saying it's so much harder now. It like, is. and I grew up in a smaller town, and like. There wasn't like all the huge apartment. There was some apartment complexes, mm-hmm. but a lot of times it was just a house that had been converted over. Maybe, maybe there was like a the duplex. downstairs was one apartment, and then the upstairs was another apartment. Right. You know what I mean? Well, up north it's like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes they even cut them in even more. Maybe they turn it into four apartments: two upstairs yeah. and two downstairs. I feel like down here it's more like duplex, but up north it's more like upstairs downstairs right right yeah but yeah we definitely i feel like back in the day we tried to go out on our own way earlier well i think we wanted independence earlier back then yeah and uh i I think the world is so fucked up now that kids like why just hang on till i can (laughs) mom's letting me hang here right (laughs) right I kind of like the way things are going. Fuck it. Um, (laughs) But but it is harder, like, to go out on your own. I mean, no. Yeah. Just because because of how hard it is to rent a place. And, like, I mean, you need, like, two months rent just to get in there before. Well, that's the thing. And then then are they going to rent to, like, you know, two or three or four 18-year-old Kids that just graduated high school, yeah, they, no. they, they're going to be like, mm, nope. that's just trouble. That's not happening. So, but we'll take your money and we'll let you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, that's where the whole process is just bullshit. It but is. Anyways. It is. There's Gouging. a lot of differences between being kids when we were kids and mm-hmm. being kids now. Yeah. And when I say kids, like I said, it's, you know, from a little. Wi- a, a long, huge range. <laughs> yes, of it is a huge range. Yeah. Huge range, but all right, all right. I guess we're gonna get into our top five. We should. <laughs> and our top five is things we did as kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like no, <laughs> it's on a different side. I had to flip it back over to do that. Uh, it, it's the top five things we'd sell if we had to, mm-hmm. like you're in a bind, you got to sell. And I was trying to like, think of the most important things, basically the most important things to me. And mm-hmm. then I had to put them in order of like yeah. how easy it would be. None of them would be easy. Right. But 
Uh, what is your and we were going like the fifth it would be the the first thing you would sell and number one would be the last yeah. thing you'd sell well i actually put something that i'm already had to go into to sell to make some extra income which i never wanted to do but space money all of the above um my disney collection that and sucks. i've already been selling some of it some of it, I'm like, oh, I want to keep this little piece or that little piece or this globe. But most of it, I've been selling. So no. that's my number five. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks that you're already you actually know. having to do it. Yeah. Uh, this is all hypothetical for me at this point. Okay. <laughs> it might become reality sooner than later. But right now, uh, my number five would be my, like, tools. Yeah. Um, uh, I've got toolboxes and and i've got a lot of tools and i don't use a lot of those tools anymore mm-hmm. i mean i bought them for a reason or whatever when i was actually using them more yeah uh but i feel like if i had to get rid of them i'd get rid of them because i i could buy just a cheap tool kit and have the a hammer and screwdriver and rent, you know pliers and shit like that to, basic to, thing. to yeah. Do what I absolutely had to do. So funny because Cameron was at the house this morning going through his huge toolbox in my basement. And he's going through things, what he's going to keep, what he's going to sell, and all of the above. And he's a tool guy. Cameron's definitely a tool guy. But, yeah, it was he was doing that (laughs) this morning. Yeah, like I said, I I don't work on cars or anything like that anymore. You know, you can't really. Well, it's just nice to have what you might need around but yeah well that's the thing it's like i'm not going to sell like you know eight hundred dollars worth of fucking sockets at a garage sale for like 10 bucks right you know yeah just not going to happen i'll right. eat the fucking things before <laughs> i'll do that <laughs> just save them for somebody that you know could use them eventually exactly. i feel like that's worth more than getting 10 bucks for them or something right yeah. right all right um so number four to me, because I've never done it and I'm kind of scared about it, but plasma or blood, if I absolutely needed some like $50 one day, like for like things were going to shit and I needed that $50, I might go sell my plasma. I, 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 I just don't really think mine it. is good. Well, that's the, that I was, you took the words <laughs> out of my mouth. I don't think they would take mine. Exactly. They'd be like, like, "Eh, you probably need somebody else's. (laughs) (laughs) We're not taking yours. Right. Uh, So, (sighs) but that's probably why I never really thought about that. Um, My number four is all my like photo and video stuff. Yeah, that would be hard for you. It would. Yeah. And really the audio stuff is in there too. So I need to write that down audio. Yeah. Like all of the gadgets. Yeah, all this shit. Yeah. I think that would be your number one. No. It's not? No. Okay. Even though I use it more than I use any of the other stuff. <laughs> uh, it, I'm also looking at like, okay, if I needed to get rid of it, but how replaceable is it? Yeah. Like, okay, these are just microphones. Uh, like, like if times got better, I could at least start building back. Yeah. Some of it. and It's all still it. available. Somewhere. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So. All right. Number three for me, um, because I've never think, I never thought this was like very, um, it's not a money making, I guess people do make money doing it. It just be a lot of hard work, but plates of food, like my cooking, like oh. selling plates of food would be, you know. If people liked it, maybe I would make some money. I haven't had your cooking yet, so yeah, I couldn't so, tell you whether yeah. you make a dime or not. <laughs> right? <laughs> I might just kill you. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that would be – it's a hustle that I've seen people do. Yeah. So why not? If I was really struggling, I might do that. Might make people food. Yeah. Some plates. I'll bring it to you. Yeah. Lunchtime. There you go. Not a bad one. Yeah. My number three is my computer. Mm. Be a tough one. Yeah. Because um, your whole life is on that most times. Like yeah. People, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't sell it before I got everything off it. Yeah, but, you clear it. <laughs> but uh, 
it again, makes things easier. Again, in life. like you can always get another computer down the line, and you know, you have your phone. Everybody's got a smartphone now, so it's not like you can't connect to the internet and look shit up and right. You know, yeah. can't do what I do, but yeah. No, that's I why I said it. I tried to think of the things that were actually that I use a lot and that are important to me. Other than the Everyday tools, things. I don't use a lot. But, yeah. Uh, They'd be helpful. Yes. Yes. Um, so my number two is, and people might think I'm crazy because I'm still hanging on to these things, but um, I have both our wedding jewelry. I have his and I have mine. I don't want to sell them, but I will if I have to. Well, yours must have been way more than ours were. Because <laughs> that's my ring right there. And this, I like it, though. It was like 20 bucks. And her yeah, her ring more. her ring was only like 100 bucks or something. Yeah, we did. Well, I I didn't ask for a ring or ask to be married. She doesn't it was a it. surprise. Yeah, he, he didn't wear his for a long time, but... Like to the point where I don't even know if he knows I have it. Like he just set it up on a little counter hook thing. Yeah. And it was sitting there for years. I was like, fine, I'll just take it. <laughs> but yeah, I have, I have both of them. And actually Cameron gave me the necklace that Jita gave him on our wedding day. He gave that to me this morning. He found it going through his stuff. So I've got, my wedding ring and band, his band, and Cameron's gold necklace, all from our wedding. And it's so, just so where's all together. This, where's this located in your house? Uh, yeah, no. You don't even know where my and, house is. And, what, and, and how much is it worth? <laughs> I don't know. It'd be interesting. I would like to get it appraised to see, to find out. But, you know. I don't need an appraisal. Because well. it's, it's priceless <laughs> to me. See? That's so sweet. Yeah. Well, that's why I haven't given... You know, this stuff up. I could have. I could have, you know, yeah, you gotten pawned it the day after. Yeah, I could have. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's still in the same boxes and everything. Well, my number two is my Bronco stuff. Oh, that's so funny. So your Bronco stuff is more important than your cameras and computer? Because uh, some of it's irreplaceable. Okay. Like if I Sounds get, like there's some expensive memorabilia. And I'm not telling you where it's at. Yeah, I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet my it, dad's got some Bronco stuff. And I'm actually in the same boat with you as you, with your Disney stuff. Because mm -hmm. I'm actually trying to figure out what I really, really want to keep that I can't let go of. Right. And get rid of some of it. Because I have so much of it. Yeah. And some of it's just not worth anything. Yeah. I mean, back in the day when like... Before the internet and stuff like that, like in living on the East Coast and being a Broncos fan, which is basically a West Coast team. Yeah. I mean, though, Denver isn't on the West Coast. It's in the West, but it's not on the West Coast. But, but you couldn't, get, you couldn't yeah. get stuff. You couldn't find it. Yeah. So, like, like, I have things like a little mug that I had, like, you know, those little helmets you get out of the gum. Mm -hmm. So I put, like, the sticker on it and... So it was like a little tiny Broncos mug. Right. But then the sticker started peeling off, so I had like put scotch tape all over it. And I still have it. And it's like, it's kind of like, it's like. Well, it's, it's just, memories, it's too. It's just garbage, but it's got like sentimental values. Yeah. Because like there was a time when you couldn't get the stuff. Right. For like, I couldn't get it. No, it's and, just memories. And then when I could and I could actually afford it, I went fucking balls out and bought yeah. way too much stuff. Yeah. And my parents bought me a bunch of stuff like at Christmas. Well, or... for a while, it's like <clears throat> once people know that you like something, that's all you get for presents for like years yeah. well, and years. Well, and I always loved getting the Broncos mm -hmm. stuff, but. That's you know. like Steelers stuff on uh, the other side of the family. My father in law was like a huge Steelers fan because he was, you know, they're from PA. So um, everything they got every Christmas was. You know, just dealer stuff right, for him. Right. T shirts, hats, everything. Bobbleheads. Bobbleheads. <laughs> die cast. Yeah. Uh, you name it, they make it. It's hard so. to get rid of stuff like that because I remember when I started my Disney collection, it's like 
people started buying me things. But it also reminds me of, you know, Cameron's childhood because, like, our whole room was Disney together. Yeah. Know? See, I don't have kids, so I don't have that to yeah, worry but- about. For me, it's just more, like, like it, sentimental value, but mm-hmm. the weight of all the stuff and having all the stuff, it's like... I just there's like, another Broncos like, fan that would probably pay an ass load for your whole collection. Well, I I have my cousin Tim who passed away. His son is a big Broncos fan. Tim was a Broncos fan. We used to Tim and I used to watch the, the Broncos games all the time. And I I want it to stay in the family if I could, if it mm-hmm. can. And all like I he's you know, I don't know how old he is now, but he's pretty young mm-hmm. and uh you know i he might love it in a few well, years and I, through know? my cousin wendy i like reached out and he said he would definitely be interested in some of it but uh but what you stuff? know <laughs> well well that's the thing i need to get my shit together and get it out and set it up take pictures and send pictures of stuff to him problem is is every time i get the stuff out it's usually i'm just trying to like condense this box or these two boxes into one box, repack it or whatever. Right. Because I'm trying to get shit out of this room or whatever. So I don't have the time to like take pictures of everything I have, you know? Right. And, uh, I, I need to get on that and do that and, and figure out what I want. You sound like my father. And, uh, he, he's been it's hard to go though. through I mean, it's a, all his stuff forever. I need to, get, but it's like a lifetime of collecting. And I feel like, like now, that I know you're a huge Broncos fan. Like if I go through my dad's stuff and be like, Hey, I have a friend that loves the Broncos that might get him to like, look through things and be like, I found this. I found that. I, found I this. know but he's going to want to sell it I'm to gonna, me and no, I can't buy any. He might gift stuff. it. He might gift it, but that's just more shit. You got to go through. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you'd, probably you'd still like, take it. Though. Right. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my number one, only, you know, this would be last resort, but um, I take pride in it because it was mine and mine only, but my house, if I had to. Yeah. I'd sell my house and my land. I don't have a house to sell, so I couldn't go there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like I, the only reason I do have it is because we sold our house together. So, like I. I knew I wanted my own place and I knew I didn't want to rent. So I bought, but if I had to, I would sell it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I get it. My number one is my drums. Yeah. I thought that was going to be on the list, but not (laughs) number one. (laughs) Well, and, and the drums themselves like are totally replaceable. Like the, the actual drums, the, yeah, they call it a shell pack. That's not it's a the, cheap pack, right there. Well, the drums themselves are they're actually lower end drums. Yeah, they um, look pricey to me. <laughs> well, you're looking at the whole kit. When I right. say, I'm talking about just like that. Oh, like one drum? Just the, no, no, no. The physical drums. They call it a shell pack. It's basically okay. just the drums. It's all the symbols and shit that I have. That like the symbols, like like this symbol right here. Probably they probably want like four hundred and fifty dollars for them. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I could I could replace the drums themselves. But the symbols are for five or six hundred dollars I could get a new brand new shiny set of drums. Huh. But the symbols They cost way more. I'm you're yeah, you you're looking at a lot of money. Yeah. And some of these symbols are older, but they're still still to replace costly, yeah. The, the platinum china, I don't think you can even get anymore. So I could probably get, you know, six hundred bucks for that fucking thing. That's crazy. But yeah, you shouldn't sell those. Those are And I've been basic. on the fence about it. Yeah. Because it's don't. like I don't uh, like I want to start playing them again, but it's just like just everything keeps getting in the way. Yeah. You know? So I feel yeah. like somebody else like more than your Bronco stuff, I feel like passing those down with me more than the Bronco stuff. Probably just maybe gonna, in my eyes. I need to start looking into it. Like when I do go, you know, because I don't want to be buried. That that scares the shit out of me being yeah, buried. No, I want to be cremated. cremate. Please cremate me and just how have much, a huge ass party. How much shit can I take with me? 
Nothing. How much shit can you cream? Well, I'm going to look into it because there's somebody <laughs> that. Oh, they could melt down all that and make a pretty necklace. Well, the whole, just everything. Just <laughs> no, the, everything just I own. Everything that Kyle doesn't want to <laughs> keep around. Just uh, like throw it in a U-Haul and take it down to the fucking incinerator. Yeah, no. Throw me in with it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Uh, I'll probably be dead. I'm uh, not going to care. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Anyways, a lot of stuff. I guess we need to call this one an episode. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we missed you, Dan Lee. I hope you're we feeling did. better. Dan Lee hopefully feels better and we'll be back in his seat next week. Hope so. Uh, I'm sure he will. Yeah. I'm sure he will. We missed you. We did. It was weird. But it Marnie wasn't and I. It was weird. It was weird? No, no, it wasn't weird. It was, it was cool. I had fun. Okay. It wasn't weird. I don't Make mean it. it weird. I don't mean. I don't mean it in the <laughs> negative way. I'm just. <laughs> but it was like when Dan Lee did our first the, a couple of weeks ago. We did an episode because yeah. we didn't get one at the cabin. It was weird. Yeah. Because we gotten used to you being on. Yeah. So. Cameron. Cameron did say, um, "It's great with all three of you." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got to find out what they say with just you and I. <laughs> I know. Cause, that's Because if be Dan Ali goes to Florida, it's just going to be you and I. I know. We're going to have to so. work it out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, thank you for listening. Yep. I am the kid. I'm Marnie. We'll catch you next time. Bye.